I'm Corey Kellum with Phoenix LiDAR Systems, and in this video, we'll cover the five simple steps to processing LiDAR data after you've collected it, so stay tuned. So you just went out and collected LiDAR data using your LiDAR system and are wondering, now what? This video will take you through the five steps needed to move from raw data to an optimized, colorized, and classified point cloud. As an overview, these steps are one, post-processing a trajectory, two, generating a point cloud, three, refining the point cloud accuracy, four, colorizing the point cloud, and five, classifying the point cloud. Let's dive in. The first step in dealing with raw data is the post-processing of the trajectory. The trajectory can be best understood as the flight path of the LiDAR system during the mapping mission. During the mission, anomalies and errors can occur that lead to a less than perfect recorded flight path. Even the most advanced aerial LiDAR systems experience these errors. Through post-processing, we can locate these anomalies and add corrections to the errors. Specifically, during trajectory post-processing, IMU and GNSS data recorded during the mission is referenced through powerful software, errors and all. Algorithms within the software then correct the position and orientation of the LiDAR system for every moment in time throughout the mapping mission. With these corrections in place, the flight path is optimized into a smooth, accurate, and reliable trajectory. A quick note, although we have drastically improved the trajectory, you'll see later in this video that we can make even more improvements using Phoenix LiDAR's proprietary LiDAR Snap technology. After we have optimized the trajectory, the next step is to create the point cloud. Remember from our What is LiDAR video that the LiDAR sensor is simply measuring distances at precise moments in time. Using the optimized trajectory, we now have a highly reliable position and orientation of the system at every given moment of time, and therefore have all the data we need to accurately plot each 3D return measurement. Using our Spatial Explorer software, we fuse the LiDAR ranging measurements to the post-process trajectory to create a point cloud. Check out the difference in these point clouds and you'll quickly see why trajectory post-processing is needed before generating a point cloud. Here is a point cloud with LiDAR fused to an unprocessed trajectory. Here is a point cloud with LiDAR fused to a processed trajectory. Although we now have a basic point cloud, we can actually improve the results even further by refining the accuracy. We do this by fine-tuning the point cloud's relative accuracy by optimizing how well overlapping flight lines match one another. You can quickly and easily make these improvements using our LiDAR Snap tool. LiDAR Snap optimizes LiDAR point clouds by calibrating LiDAR sensors and further optimizing post-process trajectories. Since all of our systems are delivered to customers with factory calibrated sensors, I'm going to leave that step out of this video. Leave a comment below if you'd like to see a video on sensor boresight calibration in the future. Check out the difference in these point clouds and you'll quickly see the benefits of LiDAR Snap. Here is a point cloud created with a process trajectory without any LiDAR snap optimization performed. Here is a point cloud created with a process trajectory after LiDAR snap optimization was performed. Now that we have the most accurate point cloud available, the fourth step is to colorize the point cloud to achieve a photorealistic representation of our data. This is done by encoding the LiDAR point cloud with RGB values from image pixels collected from a LiDAR systems camera. And voila! real-world color added to our 3D LiDAR measurements. Phoenix LiDAR systems are capable of colorizing point clouds in RGB, but are also capable of integrating other advanced imaging technology. Our advanced packages include thermal, multispectral, and hyperspectral imagery to meet challenging demands for a wide array of applications. Now that we have an optimized and colorized point cloud, we can apply the final step, point cloud classification. Point clouds need to be classified in order to extract and segment features like ground, vegetation, and transmission wires, to name a few. Other objects that can be classified are buildings, cars, fences, lampposts, shield wires, insulators, and I think you get the point. Point cloud classification can be performed manually to move points from one data class to another, or automatically using macros, filters, or other AI tools. Phoenix LiDAR System software suite actually offers all of these tools with our LiDAR mill software using AI technology to classify 13 unique feature classifications with a single click. Once you have an optimized, colorized, and classified point cloud, the sky's the limit with the accurate 3D models and data derivatives you can create. Some of these deliverables include raster or vector data products like digital elevation models and contour maps. 
Other derivatives, such as canopy height models, intensity maps, volume calculations, and vegetation encroachment analysis, are also frequently used to gain critical spatial awareness and derive business intelligence. So to recap, after you collected LiDAR, the first step is to post-process your trajectory to refine the position and orientation information from your flight path. The second step is to generate a point cloud by combining your LiDAR ranging measurements with your post-process trajectory. The third step is refining the point cloud's relative accuracy by optimizing how well overlapping flight lines match one another. The fourth step is to colorize your point cloud from projected image pixels. The fifth and final step is to classify your point cloud in order to extract key features before creating high-value data products. We hope you enjoyed this video. Phoenix LiDAR Systems is dedicated to making and sharing high-quality content on this channel. So if you learned something, please subscribe and hit the like button below. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.